Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit. I'm delighted to be joined now by what some people are calling the godfather of the AI for Good Forum. His name is Neil Sahota. He's the CEO of ACSI Labs. The reason why I say godfather is because you are actually one of the people who helped create this AI for Good Summit. So, you know, we've had seven years basically to look into this. Your thoughts? It's interesting, Chris, because if you go back in time seven years, there was a lot of concern. Is AI going to take my job? Is it going to rise up, eradicate humanity, conquer the world? So there was a lot of like fear mongering and a lot of concerns. Is, is, are people going to use AI to steal my identity? And that was kind of the challenge we had back then. That was kind of the mindset. And, and the reason we really wanted to start AI for Good and build this community and kind of showcase the power of, well, the good side was going kind to of counteract all that negativity, that fear mongering, the AI for evil, if you will. And, you know, without the right mindset, people aren't going to pursue like real solutions for the SDGs. And that's what really triggered us starting this whole thing and essentially building this community. Because you look at it today, over 280 projects going on, community of, you know, almost 30,000 people. Somebody had to lead that charge. And that's really why it was important to start and build AI for Good. Because you're a, re you're a believer that the AI robotics can help us get those SDGs. No, absolutely. We need as much help as we, we need. Like 2030 is around the corner. And I know a lot of people look at like robots, like they remember the Jetsons. Remember, Chris, like Rosie the maid, they think about those kind of functionality. Nothing wrong with that. But robots have a unique advantage in that they work 24-7. They don't get like, well, human viruses or things like that. But they also do things or go places that we can't. So you consider like the, the issue with the, the bees dying off. We were actually working on a project a few years ago about creating robotic bees to at least try and do some of the work that bees do in the ecosystem, to at least try and preserve some of that that way. And that's, I think, the power we can actually tap into. And this really highlights into this whole movement towards hybrid intelligence, that we're trying to augment our own human capabilities with machine abilities. So it's not human versus machine, it's human and machine working together. And that's where robots really fit in as our helpers, our assistants, and the abilities to, well, run into that wildfire and try and take out the source of the, the flames where we can't go. And yet, like you said, those fears initially that were there at seven years, they haven't gone away. No, they haven't. And I'm not saying or trying to discount those fears and concerns. But I think that's the challenge that we, we see. This rise of generative AI, I think it's become very real for people. I hear people all the time asking me, like, why did it just come out of the blue? And it's like generative AI has been around for almost a decade. It's just that the training like ChatGPT has reached a point where, you know, these average kind of mundane tasks for the, the average person are suddenly possible. And that's why we saw the explosion of ChatGPT go from 10,000 users to 100 million users in the span of four weeks. And I think that's triggered a lot of concern now, again, about the job loss and what this means. When you look kind of towards the future, we have to think about like AI governance. We have to think about regulation. We need that. We have a lot of people that are working on things they don't fully understand. And we're, we're trusting the technologists and they're smart people, but they're building towards a specific outcome. They're not thinking about the other potential uses, good or bad, that might come from the tool sets they're actually developing. Do you think it's a job killer or do you just think it's a job redistribution? I don't think it's either. I think it's a job transformation. Right? If you look at what's actually going on, some jobs, no doubt, are going to go away. Some jobs, the nature of the work is going to change, but it's also going to create whole new types of jobs. Talk about generative AI, suddenly the most in-demand skill set, prompt engineering. Yeah. So this was seven years ago you said you helped create this. Um, how do you see AI impacting society in the future, say seven years from now, if we're having this conversation? Uh, I, I'm an optimist, Chris, so I'll say I definitely believe it'll be for the better. But I think we're going to see more of this actually hybrid intelligence, that this, we're essentially going to be wired with like an AI assistant. So kind of a first cut at research, drafting, resume writing, whatever it might be. This is going to be kind of our, our sidekick. That's what I think how AI is going to be in our professional lives as well as our per personal lives. And, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm looking forward to that because then my wife can't complain about me not remembering things like our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Sahota, CEO of ACSI Labs, based out of California. 
and we'll have much more on the AI for Good Global Summit right here. So do stay tuned.